So now if I'm combining two tables and I want to see in the results only the matching data between two tables, then I go and use the inner join. We don't have any other type for that. So that's simple. But now if I want to see everything, all the data, I don't want to miss anything after joining two tables, then I take different path. And here I ask myself, is there like one side more important than the other? Am I interested in all data from one table, from one side? Like here we have like a main table or a master table. Then I go and use the left join. But if I want to see all the data from all tables in my query, everything, so there is no one table more important than other, then I go with the full join. So this is another path. And now the third path, if I'm interested to see only the unmatching data. So I'm doing some kind of checkups and so on. And here again, the same thing. Do I want to see the unmatching data from only one side? There is like one table that is important. Then I go and use the left anti-join. So I want to see the unmatching data from one table and I'm using the other table only for the check. But in my query, if both of the tables are important, there is no main table and secondary table. Both are important. Then I go and use the full anti-join. So actually that's it. This is the decision tree that I follow usually as I'm writing a query. And you might ask me, how about the right join? Well, as you know me, I don't have it at all in my decision tree. So I don't use it at all. Now, by looking to this, I can tell you if I check most of the queries that I write, very often I use the left join. So I can tell you this is my favorite way on how to join tables. So let me show you exactly why. Usually I write queries in order to do data analysis. So in data analytics, you have always like starting points. You have like a topic that you are analyzing like the customer. So you have always like a master table. So I always start with the main table of my analysis. So in my query, I start from this table, from table A, the main table. And then what happens? The data is not enough in this table. I need some extra data that comes from another table, like the table B. So the table B is only here like an additional data to the master table. So I go and use the left join in order to connect the table B and then I find another interesting information in another table in table C. So same things happens. I go and join the tables using the left join and so on. So I keep connecting multiple tables to this main table in the middle and my query gonna look like this always doing left join with multiple tables. Now of course you might say yeah but sometimes you would like to see only the matching data and so on. So it makes sense only to use the inner join. Well in order to do that I can control everything that I want to see in the final result using the WHERE clause. So in the WHERE clause, I define exactly what I want to see in the final result. So with that, I get like more flexibility on whether I want to see the matching, unmatching data and so on, like we done in the left anti-join, right? So as I'm analyzing data, I tend very frequently having this setup where I start from the main table and I left join all other tables. And with the WHERE conditions, I control the final results. So this is how I connect multiple tables together. So now if I want to visual this in like circles, it's going to look like this. We have the circle A. So this is the master table, the starting point. I want to see all the data from table A and I live join it then with another table, table B. And from table B, I want to see only the matching data. So it's like the live join. Now what's going to happen? I'm going to go and add another table. So another circle, the circle C. And from the circle C, we want to see only the matching data. And of course, you can keep adding circles to this, but it's going to be always the same thing. And in your circle gonna has only the matching data. So now as we learned, we can use joins in order to combine multiple tables to get a complete big picture about topic like the customers. I would like to see everything about the customers in the final results. So either you're gonna do it like me where you start from the main table and then go and left join all other tables. Or maybe you say, you know what? There is no main table about the customer's data. All the tables are equally important. Then you can go and join all those tables using the inner join if you are interested only on the match data. So what can happen if you have again those circles? From the A, you need only the matching data. From B, you need as well only matching data. And as well from the third circle. So you are interested only on the overlapping between all those three tables. So you will get only this section where you have overlapping between all three tables. So this is of course another way on how to join multiple tables. Okay, so now my friends, let's go back to SQL in order to practice how to join multiple tables. Okay, so now let's have a task. This is going to be a little bit challenging. We will be 
doing multi joins using the sales db retrieve list of all orders along with their related customer product and employee details and for each order display the following we want to see the order id the customer name the product name sales price salesperson name so there is a lot of things that is going on and the first thing that you're gonna notice is that now we are using different database we will be not using the my database we're gonna go and use the sales db so this is the first thing that we have to do so instead of using my database so we say use sales db and then execute it we are now connected to the sales db so this is the first thing so now if you are reading this task there are a lot of tables that are involved we need the orders we need the customers products and employees so there are like four tables needed in this task and we need different stuff from each table so now how i think about it well it is mainly focusing on the table orders right so we need all the orders we cannot miss any order here so this sounds for me this is the main table and then it says along with that we need other informations so that means the other tables are not that important like the orders so this gives me feeling about what is the main table and this is gonna be my starting point so let's start from that from the table orders so select star from and here you have to pay attention to that this database has always a schema it's called if you look to the left side sales dots the table name so we have to write that now in our query so we're gonna write it over here sales dots and then the table name the orders let's go and execute it now i know this is the first time that you are querying this table we have a lot of informations here and as well we have a lot of ids those ids gonna help us of course on joining our data with the other tables so what do we need from here we need the order id so we have it over here we're gonna got the order id this time the naming convention is different we don't have like underscores and common case we have different type of namings so be careful with that so what else do we need we need the sales so if you go to the right side over here we have column called sales and we're gonna go and include it to the results now all the other informations are actually not needed but i need those ids in order to join it with the other tables so now what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go and give it an alias and O. so now i'm gonna go and assign it for each column this comes from the orders and as well the same thing for the sales so that's it for now and if i go and execute it i will get the orders and the sales all right so that's all for the first table let's go now and see what do we need we need that customer's name well actually we don't have this piece of information in the orders so all what you have to do is to go and explore in the other tables in order to find this column so how i usually do i go and explore the tables like this so i write a symbol select from each tables so the customers so now i go and repeat this for each table inside the database so we have the customers employees we have an orders the orders archive and as well the products so now i start exploring the table so if i go to the customers over here we can see we have here five customers and we can see the names of the customers so we see the first name and the last name and this is exactly what i need for my query now of course we have to go and connect this table with the orders so we need a common column usually it's going to be the id so here we have the customer id and if you go and query the orders you can find here as well the customer id now if you are working in big projects you can have a lot of tables and exploring each one of them can be really hard so now of course if you have like in the project hundreds of tables it's going to be really hard to explore each table so instead of that a good project a good database usually has an entity relationship model er model like the one that we have for the course and here you can find easily the tables that you have inside your database and as well the relationship between them and this is very important especially if you want to join tables so now by just looking quickly to this diagram i can understand okay there is an id called customer id inside the table orders and it is like a foreign key to the primary key the customer id so that means if i want to connect the orders with the customers i have to use that customer id so as you can see this is really nice documentations and i can quickly understand how to join the tables so now back to our query now what i'm gonna do i'm gonna say lift join so with that i guarantee all the orders gonna be presented in the output and i will see always 10 orders so now let's join it with the table customers sales dot customers and let's give it an alias like this and now we're gonna build the joining condition so it's gonna be the customer id from the table orders equal to the customer id from the table customers so with that SQL understand how to match the two tables and now the two tables are connected and i can get the information is now from the customers so see let's go and get the first name and as well the last name 
So now let's go and execute it. So now, as you can see, we have customers for each order, which is really nice. So with that, we got the customer name and the order ID. Now the next one, we need the product name. So either you're going to go here and start exploring. I think it is inside the table products. And here you can see we have the product. This is the name of the product. And if you check our ER diagram, you can see we can connect the table orders with the products using the product ID. So we have the product ID in the left and as well in the right. And now we can go and build this join as well over here. So again, I go with the left join. I don't want to lose anything from the table orders. Sales products and we give it an alias p now the condition for that here you have to be very focused you want to get the product from the orders so you say o dot product id equal to the product id from the table products so as you can see in the joins we are always joining with the table orders right we are not trying to join for example the customers with the products always we are joining with the main table so with that we have connected the third table and we can get the information that we need so we need the product as i'm gonna go and rename it products name so let's go and execute it. And with that, my friends, I'm getting now the product informations from the table products. So we have the sales as well, and we need the price. So if you go to the products, you can see we have as well price information. I forgot about it. So let's go and get it as well from the same table price. So let's go and execute it. And with that, we have as well the prices. Now the last column, it says we want to get the salesperson name. So the name of the employee, right? Now, if you go and explore as well, we have here employees table and execute it. You can see we have here the name and the last name of the employees and we have an ID. So now we need this ID as well in the orders. So you can see we have the product ID, the customer ID. We already used those two, but we have here one more extra ID called the salesperson ID. Of course, it is not called employee id so here you might be a little bit skeptical about it that's why we have to go and check again our er diagram and as you can see the employee id from the employees it is connected to the salesperson id so with that i have better feeling about it and i understand okay i can connect the orders with the employees using the salesperson id so let's go and do that i'm gonna say left join so as you can see i'm just doing left joins sales dots employees as e and the condition again very important always the first table is included in the join condition and here we can say the sales person id is equal to the employee id so with that we have connected as well the employees and we will get as well the first name and the last name so perfect that's it let's go and execute it and as you can see guys now we are getting the name of the salesperson now here comes an issue as you are joining multiple tables and you are getting columns from different tables what can happen you might encounter this scenario where you have the same names in multiple tables so now as you can see we have the first name last name from the employees and as well we have the first name last name from the customers and it's going to be really hard from the result to understand what are we talking about is it the customers is it the employee that's why in this scenario if you have the same names we have to go and start giving aliases so for the first one we're gonna say customer first name and as well for the last name we're gonna say customer last name same thing for the employee so let's say employee first name or we can call it the salesperson whatever employee last name so if you go and execute it now it's gonna be more clear here we are talking about the name of the customer and here we are talking about the name of the employee. And again, one more thing, if you are not using aliases, it's going to be an issue. So for example, if you go over here and you don't use the table name before the column. So if I go and remove it and execute it, you will see I'm getting an error. Now SQL can't understand what are you talking about? Is it the first name of the customer or from the employees? Because you are not specific about it. So you have to tell SQL to which table belong this column. It's very important to use a table name or the alias before the column name especially if you have the same column. So now we will not get an error. And with that, we have solved the task. You have really to pay attention about the join keys, the condition. You have to do it correctly. Because as you can see, now we have a lot of tables and a lot of columns. And sometimes happens an issue where you specify the wrong columns or the joins and the result gonna make at all no sense.
So always double check, are you using the correct keys in order to join the tables? So with that, we have solved the task and this is exactly how I join tables. I have always a starting point from an important table and everything else gonna be left joined. And in my results, if I want to remove any scenario, then I go and use the where clause. So this is how I join multiple tables. Mm -hmm.